We're pushing a box across the floor, a rather heavy box, 70 kilograms, and we have to lean down to push it. What we want to work out is how much how hard we have to push for this case, and then do it again if we bend down so our push is horizontal and see how much difference it makes. Okay, so let's focus the problem. We have the floor, uh, we have a box, and we're applying a force to it. Let's call that force P. Always give symbols to any things you're trying to work out. And it's going, it's moving across the floor at some constant speed. Now what sort of physics are we talking about here? Um, things are moving, so you might think energy or motion equations, but they're actually moving at a constant speed. You're just keeping it moving at the same speed, which means there's no acceleration, so this is actually a statics problem. Nothing is accelerating, so the net forces must all be zero. Okay, so as with most net forces, let's work out all the forces. What have we got here? We've got the push force, we've got the weight, mg, we've got a normal force, size unknown, and there will be some sort of friction force. So let's draw a free body diagram, just for the box. The point of free body diagrams is to isolate which forces act on which objects. So we've got normal, push, weight, friction. So, as usual for these sort of problems, let's, well first of all let's get the angle in here. So it's theta, and theta equals 50 degrees. So let's balance forces. So vertically, what forces have we got? Upwards, it's the normal force, must equal the downward forces. We know they're equal because the box doesn't either sink into the floor or jump into the air. Now if this is theta here, there's going to be a downward component, which is opposite over it, so it's going to be sine theta. So that so P sine theta plus mg. So there's the component of the push downwards, there's the weight downwards, and they equal the upward normal force. How about horizontally? Horizontally we've got the right hand force which is P cos theta equals the friction force. And we also know the equation from friction is that when something's moving, the friction force is the coefficient of dynamic friction mu times the normal force. Okay, so we have two equations. We have this one, and we have this one. We have two unknowns, the force cancels out. So we have the normal force, and we have the push force, which is what we're trying to work out. So let's solve these two equations for the push force. The best way to do this is to get rid of the normal force, which we don't care about. The best way to get rid of the normal force would be to substitute this into here. When you substitute in, you get this. Now we need to work out what the push force is, so we need to rearrange this to get P as a subject. So let's put all the terms which have a P on the left hand side, so we've got P cos theta minus mu sine theta equals mu mg. So P equals mu mg over cos theta minus mu sine theta. Now let's check that for plausibility. Dimensions, P is a force, the same dimensions as mass times acceleration, and here we have a mass times an acceleration. 
this, 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 this have no units because they're all ratios. So dimensions work. How about plausibility? The force goes up if the mass goes up or g goes up, which makes sense. It goes up if the coefficient of friction goes up. It's a bit more complicated dependence on theta. Um, if you push vertically down, so theta equals 90 degrees, um, then you've got cos theta is 0, sine theta is uh, 1, so it's mg over 1. Not sure that makes sense. Yes, it doesn't make sense. If theta equals 90 degrees, this is 0, that's minus 1. So in fact, the push is negative. You actually have to pull to move it, which I guess makes sense. If you're pushing vertically down, you actually have to pull it to lift it. Um, there will be an angle somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees when this term is equal to that term, and you have to push with an infinite force. And then when you go beyond that angle, a negative force, which kind of makes sense. As you push down and down to more and more steep angle, depending on what the coefficient of friction is, it gets harder and harder to push. It eventually becomes impossible. And then if you push even beyond that, you have to do the reverse to make it to work. So I guess that makes sense. What is the actual value of this? If we plug numbers in, we get 498 newtons. Does that look plausible? Um, I think so. 70 kilograms, so lifting it straight up would be 70 times g, so about 700 newtons, so it's less than the force to lift the box straight up, but still pretty substantial. On to the second part, we now want to work out if we push horizontally. In this case, we just set theta equals 0, so this is 1, that is 0, so it's just mu mg. So P horizontal equals mu mg equals, let's change something more visible, that equals 206 newtons. Which again looks plausible, rather less than that, uh, but still of the same order of magnitude. So all looks sensible.